So hey everyone, today I'm having Ryan from Blogging from Paradise. So today we're going to talk about Ryan's favorite topic, blog commenting. So you know, he when I came across Ryan, you know, I came across his blog through a blog comment. To be honest, then I went into went to the Facebook profile and this stuff. You know, when it's come to blog commenting, you know, I read you know before doing this particular interview, I read I I guess five blog posts in a row. and three were talking about ryan so so he is the number one guy to talk about this particular topic so hey ryan just introduce give a formal introduction about yourself sure thing i appreciate it shay raj really appreciate it my name is ryan bidoff i am the creator and owner of bloggingfromparadise.com i just teach folks how to become professional bloggers i've been circling around the globe for wow 10 years now and i've been running blogging from paradise for about 7 and it's just inspiring people to become successful by sticking to the basics the fundamentals of creating and connecting so that's pretty much what i do yeah so you are very consistent with it <laughs> i know you are one blog post daily yeah so before we continue to the questions and aryan i just want to give a you know a beginners who are listening to this podcast you know what blog commenting is and just i give a little bit content around in you know, what are your thoughts on blog commenting how did you start commenting on blogs sure sure it's the way i look at it share raj is it's one of the most undervalued underutilized ways to connect with people especially really well known people because you figure emailing can be tough sometimes mm-hmm. uh using different channels where these folks are getting all types of say facebook messages or twitter dms a lot of them don't even check it but a blog comments good because it gets right into their heart they love their blogs and i think people even if they get spam sometimes or a lot they still appreciate getting a genuine comment so i just looked at it as an easy way or direct way i should say to connect with people and these powerful bloggers through a channel that really again it gets into their heart because we love receiving comments we know that people are out there and they're reading our work i saw awesome bloggers like donna merrill and lisa sicard leaving these really in-depth comments and then they're saying hey this is a way that i'm really driving traffic and building my business so i'm like you know years ago maybe i should try to follow their lead and see how they're doing it so basically it's just sharing your genuine thoughts in relation to the blog post of course with a fellow blogger and this helps you build relationships with them and then from there that's where you get really cool benefits like you get blog traffic perhaps profits if these bloggers promote you or endorse you based on the friendship that you develop through the comments so it's kind of a gateway activity because some folks will click on your comment link for sure and that's awesome but i've found that the real power is the friendships you develop with these bloggers whose blogs you comment on persistently and you're really generous then they'll promote you endorse you i mean look at this podcast Yeah. so many popping up on those blogs right a lot of that was blog commenting that's why it came up on the radar screen yeah so you know i i read one of your blog posts you said you know your blogging success blogs to blog commenting so can you tell a little bit story around that sure sure i i just i fell in love with the idea of sharing my thoughts through comments and making them more and this is back in the day I don't do much of that now but making them more like guest posts like mini guest posts yeah. so not filled with spam but where I'd say okay I'm going to read this post and share my thoughts but I'm going to really write like four or five six seven paragraphs not to force it not to say oh I have to write some paragraphs <laughs> but I'm like let me form a bond with this blogger and let me add more content to the post because people don't realize comments are content a blogger publishes a post which is a ton of good content then when you have this really valuable content that adds to the value of the post because people look at it and are like wow so i just started grabbing people's attention spans with these really long in depth thoughtful you know helpful comments and from there i started driving traffic directly people would be like oh i clicked on your comment say i'm pro blogger i see a lot of really in depth comments there mm-hmm. so i started getting readers and customers who follow darren at pro blogger that would stop by blogging from paradise because they were like oh who is this guy sharing all these in depth thoughts and not a lot of bloggers were doing it at the time and i'm thinking they're kind of missing this opportunity because why a lot of bloggers are like oh i want to get a backlink and that's the mm-hmm. worst attitude to have so many bloggers do that and they either spam or maybe they'll leave a couple words and it's okay to do that but you're not going to make that impact and really befriend a lot of other bloggers so that's really where i started to uh 
see where my bread was buttered. And again, yeah. Sharaj, there's so few gatekeepers. As long as you could stay out of the spam folder, and you know these bloggers are on the ball and they're approving comments, and most are, you're going to have your comments appear on these blog posts. So it's really, really cool. And again, it's really undervalued and underutilized still. Yeah. Even I have followed you on Discuss, you know, I just uh, get an email every single week, you know, uh, on John uh, John Chow website. <laughs> on this website, yeah, Ryan is dropping some comments. So I, I sometimes feel like I need to go and check out, uh, check out that blog post. So uh, if you have discussed, then maybe that's a way to drive some traffic to other, you know, uh, some blogging buddies as well. Yeah. So exactly. And they allow mm -hmm. not a direct back link. Yeah, but they do. But the discuss does allow the um you to include your link, even if it's not direct. It's still good yeah. because people follow it. Yeah, even I can just uh, even one can just go ahead and check your discuss or how many comments you leave when you know, when I checked your discuss profile for one one time, like I like these many comments like Rihanna I posted. <laughs> Like these are the number, even I haven't posted combined, you know, if I combine, that's discussed only for blog. If I combine my everything, Instagram, Facebook, you know, I haven't uh, gone to that extent as well. So the next question is, when did you start blog, commenting on blog and what do you think? Why it's important others to, you know, you already discussed about this, but why it's important for others to comment as well? Well, really, I started back in 2008 when I became a blogger. Wow, is it 2007? No, I'm losing track. <laughs> I think in 2007, 2008, uh, I dove into a blog commenting campaign just because, again, I saw the opportunity. I have to say, I really didn't do it the right way, like getting super in-depth until like a little before blogging from paradise and blogging from paradise. So I would say like 2014, something like that. And I just feel as far as the why, it's smart to comment on real estate that fellow bloggers own mm -hmm. or own. Facebook can take your comment away quickly or ban you. Twitter, it's easy to get really penalized on social media because it's these big blogs and brands and you figure, well, not blogs per se, but big brands, you know, social media sites. Whereas when you're commenting on somebody's blog, it's really helpful because you have a fellow blogger who owns the domain. So if they own the domain and they keep doing what they value and you're being polite and sharing value added comments, as long as they own the domain and they don't close it down, those comments are evergreen. So they're going to be there forever. And I still yeah. get traffic from comments I left in like 2009, 10, 11 years ago. So when you realize that it's evergreen content and you're building these bonds, which is important, and also that it's just going to be there like evergreen for a really long time, unless they stop paying the hosting bills or domain bills. It really makes sense as far as a, a consistent means of being seen and building friendships. Yeah. So uh, that was my one of the question, like how much traffic you drove using blog commenting and number if you want to give out. Honestly, Shiraj, I know it sounds crazy and it drives people nuts because they're very analytical. And I understand yeah. I don't even pay attention to metrics yeah, or stuff. I, I know I it sounds nuts, Just but the way I look at it, when I focus anything. really, you know what it is? Oh, uh, I don't know as far as traffic, but the last I checked, I think, and it's varying sources, so it varies, but between yeah. 40,000 and 50,000 backlinks yeah. to blogging wow. from Paradise, 40,000, 50,000, and a lot of those are blog comments. Some are guest posts. But a lot of those are blog comments. Um, as far as actual comments, I think Discuss, I don't know the traffic, but I've published 10,000 on Discuss yeah. alone and maybe 100,000 or 120,000 blog comments. So you could kind of guess that I definitely get some traffic yeah. <laughs> from 100,000 comments yeah. over 13, 14 years. Okay. Yeah, but it really is the quality though. It's the quality. Mm -hmm. It's important because one really phenomenal comment on ProBlogger I remember when I was doing more list building, it was like my subscribers jumped and my traffic, whatever, 50, 100, 200 people for like one comment. And it was really in depth and it was on ProBlogger, which is a blog and kids blog. So always think quality. But yeah, that number, that will just keep increasing. The key is to really be committed to um, doing blog commenting genuinely and yeah. persistently. Yeah, consistency is the key. <laughs> everything so do you feel a connection with people you know who post comments on your blog maybe attaching their social media profile in the website link you know how do you appreciate that you know those people who post some thoughtful I, comments no i 
I feel a real deep connection because one of my friends, Lisa Sicard, who runs Inspire to Thrive, mm-hmm. she was talking about through comments and through my blog, but really through comments, she felt like she really got to know me as a human being. Because sometimes we're here and we see these avatars and these talking heads and we're like, yeah, we know they're a person. We know that in our mind, but sometimes there's a disconnect. We're not realizing it's a human being just like me, right? You look at numbers and this and that. Comments for me, when I read somebody's words, I look at their avatar before the picture and I'm thinking that's a human being speaking to me, just like we're talking now. Mm -hmm, So that's one of the easiest ways to remind myself if I read the words out loud, I'm like, they're talking to me through these comments. And that's where I really, really appreciate them. And that's that humanizing aspect, which is really, it's a skull I'm still developing now. And I've been blogging for a long, long time. It's thinking about as a real person on Twitter and on Facebook and leaving these comments. So when I see that, what I usually do is I click through to their blog. I mean, I don't have the links now in my comments, but I'll know their blog or I'll click through, I'll look it up on Google and I'll read one of their posts and leave a comment as a a kind gesture for their kind act because they didn't have to comment on my blog. They have a billion blogs to comment on. So doing that back and forth leads to those strong friendships where really the real power comes from blog commenting because once you build bonds with fellow bloggers, again, look at this chat. We built bonds through commenting, through Twitter, We're discussing with one another uh, feedback. You're offering me awesome feedback. I'm checking it out. And then look at this podcast springs up. That's exactly it. That's everything with blogging. You're going to solve problems, but it's these friendships that really lead to the the higher tiers of moving up in circles and becoming more successful. Yeah. So I agree with that. Well, the next question is like, how can we improve the level of discourse so that those people who commenting on the blog don't feel threatened or afraid of sharing their opinion? That's a really good question. I would say never, ever, 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 no matter what people come to you with, unless it's like really mean or nasty and we really don't get that much, really criticize, heavily judge make fun of a commenter. I mean, I'd never do that in a billion years, but Mm -hmm. some bloggers do it. They kind of belittle commenters. And I know it's their fear and pain in their mind, but to make it like a safe space, like have people share their thoughts, whatever they are and say, Hey, you know, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts, just making it a place where it's, let's say free speech outside Mm -hmm. of doing something that's really nasty. You know what I mean? If it's like really hurtful or hateful, None of that, but allow someone to share their thoughts, whatever they are. And then when other commenters are thinking of commenting, they'll stop by Blogging Paradise to be like, oh, this person shared this different thought from Ryan or or these different viewpoints. And they'll feel like it's a safe space. Like anybody could share anything virtually. So then they'll be more likely to open up. So as a blogger, be open to receiving, you know, all types of comments, uh, disagreements, different viewpoints. And when you do that and that conversation and community builds, then other people who are maybe afraid to say, oh, I don't want to share my thoughts, even if it's yeah. nothing that's they agree with me. A lot of people are afraid to share their thoughts because they'll be like, oh, I feel intimidated or people have told me I feel like I'm, you know, you're a celebrity or something. And I'm like, no, no, I put on my <laughs> pants one leg at a time like you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a person, you know, just a human being. So that's a lot of it, allowing people to share their thoughts and then really being appreciative and a lot of things, I would be really straightforward and honest, but I've had a lot of bloggers say as far as maybe folks that have like a decent profile, I'm not that well known, but they say I'm definitely the nicest blogger out of, you know, pretty well-known bloggers in the world. And I don't try to be, but I guess on some level I'm hitting the mark because I really try to be nice and open and just appreciative. So when you put that good energy out there, the good karma, the good vibes, it does come back to you through all sorts, uh, types of channels, including awesome people. And you foster yeah. and have these really open conversations for your blog, through comments. Mm, yeah. That's uh, yeah, that's the thing that I learned from you today. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's go to next question. And this one is like uh, one thing that I, you know, that one kind of very hard to me, but as I told, like commenting on blogs is one of the best ways to grow your audience, right? So what are your strategies for building a commenting habit? You know, building that commenting muscle. In sure, your sure. I would say the commenting habit of the muscle, I like how you put that. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's seeing the value in it. 
because most bloggers, they quit so quickly, they quit the habit, they don't develop that commenting muscle, they don't get that momentum going because they're like, oh, I just want to get a backlink. I want to make it about me. I want to get traffic for me, 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 me. When you see the real value is not only helping another human being, but then understanding all of the opportunities and traffic and business that could come from a comment when you make it about helping the other person, then you'll always comment. You'll comment every day or five days a week, mm -hmm. however much you work. That's the real key. That's where you make it habitual. You'll be like, man, this is valuable. I'm connecting with another human being. Another thing I would say that's really important is to stick mainly, to comment mainly on blogs within your niche. Yeah. Because what I used to do is comment on any blog. And even though I knew the value, I wasn't befriending a lot of people, driving a lot of traffic back to me. I wasn't seeing any business expansion, yeah. not because I wasn't commenting genuinely, but it was because yeah. I was on these blogs that were way outside of my niche. So that was another thing I had to learn too. I became consistent by sticking with like-minded folks, sharing my thoughts. And then not only did I see greater results as far as feedback, I had the energy to keep doing it because I knew it worked. Yeah. Even I would add a little, you know, cost tech to it. Like people can just go ahead and install Feedly, add your favorite login. And Feedly just sent you an email every single day. You know, it's just subscribe to the newsletter. And they say, these are the blog posts they publish. Just go ahead and um, you can start with just one comment a day. Then you can slowly scale it up. Uh, so that's the key. Exactly. Hmm. Yep. Moreover, my Feedly is filled as well. Yes. Yeah. Smart strategy. <laughs> Yeah, Feedly. And the next very good thing about Feedly is that notifies you about the latest blog post. So you can just be a little bit, you know, above the fold than the other commenters that are coming lately. Yeah. So a little, <laughs> yep. little thing that I think I learned from you or somewhere else. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. So the next question, like, how do you feel, you know, when a blogger leaves a comment on your blog, you know, whether to follow this or not? And what are the key elements you see in that particular comment? I would say if it's genuine, I could tell they read the blog post and they mm -hmm. give me a little bit of meat. Like they write more than like, hey, really good job. And I appreciate that. I mean, they'll leave a sentence or two and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. But when they share their thoughts a little bit, even if it's a couple sentences, three, four sentences where it's like, I read this point, and this is what I appreciated, or I disagreed and this is why. I know when they engage me a little bit with a, a specific tangible example of my blog post, like they read it and they're saying, here's this point that I want to flesh out. Then I'll start thinking, okay, cool. They're interested in me. They're interested in chatting. They want to share value and we we'll start a dialogue going. From that point, if I look at their name and I see, okay, they're really in it to do it genuinely. They're being honest. They want to chat with me. Then I'll check out their blog. I mean, almost every single time I'll at least check it out. I'm not always going to read the latest post and comment based on my schedule, mm -hmm. but if they have solid content in a lot of cases, I'll tweet it. If not uh, minimum, at least I'll scan it. So, so much of it's just showing an interest, not so much even in me, but in the content and wanting to chat with me where it's like they're using a comment to bond with me to develop a friendship from there. Then I'll be like, okay, I'll follow their blog. I'll check it out and see what they're, what they got going on. And then, especially when it goes back and forth after two or three posts, I'm like, Oh, they keep coming back and leaving comments. Then I'm like, Oh, okay. So we're starting to build a friendship here. And then from there, it really takes off. Yeah. I mean, again, it's like our, our chats. I mean, this is what happens checking out a blog, leaving a comment, tweeting it's, it's all engagement guys. And I know in our minds, sometimes we think numbers, 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 but when you realize all that online success comes from sharing value and solving problems and going back and forth, engaging people, talking to people online, then you'll understand the real secret. It's connecting with people and commenting is just one of the best ways to do it. Yeah. Giving that seventh impression. You know, I read that in particular book. Like if you want to, you know, you know, give a feeling of personalization, you need to just connect with that guy at least seven times. You can you can do it I mean, by liking their post and sometimes these are practices to show up. Yeah. Seven contacts rocks. Yeah, I would say that's a really solid number. And you make a really good point too, Shiraj. It's it's about it's about personalizing. That's another point that I, I forgot to mention. Use mm -hmm. the blogger's name, especially when you're making your first contacts, because that alone can keep you out of spam folders. Like I get yeah. a lot of spam, so I don't see 
even if it's a pretty genuine, legit comment, if I don't see my name, I get so many tens of thousands of spam comments over the year that never use my name. If I don't see my name in the spam or trash, it could be a legit comment, but in a lot of cases, I'll just have to dump it because I don't have time to go through every comment. But when I see the name, even if it's like a decent comment, I'll approve it because I realize, oh, they put the effort to at least know my name <laughs> and to read yeah. the post and to get an idea or two out there. So that's another key. Definitely use comment, uh, use names, I should say, of your fellow bloggers. And I like signing off with my name here and there because it adds a personal touch. And it mm -hmm. also kind of just shows I'm taking this you know, second to put my name there too. So it's like two human beings talking to each other, addressing each other by name, which makes us feel you know, a little more special, if you will. Mm, yeah. So there, you know, when I was doing the research for this particular podcast, I went through many articles and they say blog commenting is that, blog commenting is that, you know, some news website for the sake of getting some attraction into it. So have you noticed any decline in blog commenting in the, you know, several years you did blogging? Well, the one thing I have noticed is that over the years, more bloggers are closing comments. Like I did it for a while because I was just besieged by spam and that bloggers aren't giving out links anymore. Like it'll be link less. You know, you could share your name, but there's no you know field for the URL. And it's just because again, as far as spam. So I do get the commenting isn't quite where it was when people were giving away. I mean, there was always pretty much no follow anyway, but at least when you had a link and more bloggers had them open. But to me, that's actually a bonus because even though there's a little bit of decline in traffic with the closeouts, it shows that every person that's commenting on your blog is genuinely interested in you because they know they're not getting a link. Like in these cases, yeah. right? Like my friend Janice Wald at Mostly Blogging, I've been commenting on her blog, no links, you know, just my name. And she appreciated so much that I left three comments. She's like, hey, and it was, I think it was like three or four blog posts. And I've commented on our blog over there. She's like, by the way, you have a standing uh, opening guest posting opportunity. She's like, whenever you want to guest post. So it's like three or four comments. And granted, I could write pretty well and I built my name up, but it was like three, me sharing my thoughts. And then I get a guest post on her blog, which is a pretty high BA and well-known blogging tips blog. So you see that it's a gateway. So it's going to be more about than ever. If I'm commenting, you know, I'm interested in you and sharing the relationship of am I going to get a backlink. And then you see that opens the door for all these other opportunities. And obviously guest posting is powerful. You know, I don't know how she's a huge list and blogging tips readers. So I just published a guest post. I'll publish another one soon. And again, blog comments, I didn't get a link out of it, but I got a guest posting opportunity on a really well-known blog. So this is where, that works in our favor. Now you understand bloggers aren't getting links in a lot of cases. And even if they are, it's still powerful just for the friendship aspect of it. It's a gateway, ultimate gateway activity for new bloggers too, because a new blogger is not going to get a guest post on a well-read blog. But if they read a blog post and leave a genuine comment, you could be seen on any blog in the world that has comments open, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, but it's doing it the right way. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. You know, you have shared many stories in your blog posts as well, like how you get the guest blogging opportunities here and there. Mm -hmm. So the next question is like, do you, you know, already answered it, you know, do, do you find it difficult to get an honest comment as you told, like you first of all, look into the, they read your blog post, then the name, right? So how do you find get it like when you are reading a comment is it genuine or not no i want to this is a little in depth yeah 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 this is a skill that's only learned from experience it's only experience because we all know when we first start blogging most of us people start leaving spam comments and we're happy to get them because we never got a comment so like i got my first comment and i like me at least and i know a lot of bloggers they hit approve it's generic it's spam but nobody else leave ever left a comment like I remember me, my first couple of months, I only got one to three visitors a day. So it took months to get my first comment back in 2008. So I'm like, all right, um, yes. And then as I start <laughs> blogging more, I start putting two and two together. And I'm like, when somebody says nice posts with exclamation point, I'm like, oh, that's a spammer. That's not truthful. It's not genuine. So it took me a while from experience. And then as you gain more and more experience, 
your intuition, your heart knows when someone's being honest. But then also too, logically, you'll notice people use their, your name, you know, they'll say, Hey, Ryan. So I'm like, okay, they're at least using my name. In most cases, they're not going to be spamming. They'll share maybe a point from the blog post. Oh, I agree with this. Or I love this point that you made. They'll write maybe three or four sentences. They'll sign off with their name. If they do all those things, use your name, uh, use their name to sign off. They make a point in a post. It's pretty legit that it's an honest comment. Even if they don't do all those things, you're just going to see from experience like, okay, this is a truthful person that's sharing their thoughts. Maybe it's not, you know, five paragraphs, but it's like five or six sentences. Yeah. Okay. I'll approve it. It's not spam, but only experience will tell you because you're going to see bloggers that are going to leave what look like genuine comments and they'll even use your name. But then when you look in the spam folder, it'll be the same comment on long different posts. So that will tell you too, like, Oh, wait a second. They're spamming me. They're just trying to leave these generic comments that sound okay. And they use my name experience is your best teacher in this aspect, but um, using a name, signing off with the name, detailing a specific point. And most cases from my experience, these are genuine commenters that are leaving their honest opinion. And people don't have to leave a, 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 a novel. They don't need 15 paragraphs. Like I, I did that in the past and that was awesome, but it could just be like five sentences, a paragraph, just a little bit of a chat you know, use a name. Hey, I like this point. I'm really learning. I'm struggling with this. Thanks so much, Ryan. Okay. I can go with that. That's fine. Everybody doesn't have to leave a really in-depth comment. So experience will be your best teacher. Yeah. So you also answered the next question that was blog, um, you know, beginner blog commenting mistakes. So let's go on to the, one of the question that is, you know, publicly asked, just I were talking with my friend, I'm going to you know, have a Ryan in talking about blog commenting. So he told me, like, ask this question as well. So do you think that blogging for the sake of blogging is okay? You know, how about, you know, uh, including a business part of it, since you are, you know, you sell your eBooks, you have your own audio courses, video courses, etc. But uh, what do you think about the the take on you know people write personal kind of personal blogs? They run, you know, sharing their goals. It's a kind of their Facebook news feed where they, you know, they just go personal about it. Yeah, really, it is blogging for the sake of blogging. Like if you just want to blog or you just want to build a business. You could totally do that. The real difference maker is the intent. Like what's in our heart? What do we really want to do? If you want to build the business, that's great. Blogging just for the sake of blog or even just blogging for sharing your thoughts. I just want to share my thoughts. Um, personal blog. What do I feel today? Uh, I want to eat uh, Fruit Loops or oatmeal for breakfast and <laughs> talk about brushing your teeth. That's totally okay if you just want to do a personal blog and your thoughts. However, if you want to make it a business, if you want to make money with it, if you want to eventually monetize it, unless you're famous and have 10 million followers, you're a celebrity, you're a movie star, yeah. famous writer, it, you're never going to be able to monetize because when you don't have a name, you don't have credibility, you don't have trust, nobody's going to want to know overall, 99% of people aren't going to be like, oh, what is this person I've never heard of? What are they eating for breakfast? Uh, oatmeal. That's great. That's exciting. Like they're not going to care. <laughs> so that's the problem with, I shouldn't say the problem. That's the issue with blogging. What's on my mind. I just want to blog about life. Now, if you don't want to monetize it, go right on ahead. It can kind of be like a little bit of a diary, but until you become famous and that just takes a long time to get really, really famous, it just doesn't make sense. Now, when you have a specific topic in mind, yeah. you're like, I want to cover blogging tips or travel or whatever, yeah. then you enter into a different realm because then you become a specialist, not a yeah. generalist. And from there, that's when people begin to trust you. Like, oh, he blogs about this one thing that I'm interested in because most people aren't going to be interested in what's on our minds until we become very famous, you know, until we're an actor, Hollywood, Bollywood, right? It's, mm -hmm. just, it's just that way. <laughs> So that's where blogging for blogging, where you would just want to think about, okay, I could do that. But when it comes to monetizing down the road, and most bloggers do want to at least monetize somewhat, or they want to reach a bigger audience. That's when it becomes like, oh, I just can't blog about for blogging sake, anything on my mind. I want to think about a specific topic, something I'm passionate about. And that's where everything really opens up. But that's, it's, it's uncomfortable because most of us were like, oh, I'll just blog about whatever. Because when we're new, we lack clarity. We have a lot of doubts. 
So then we don't want to commit to one thing. Oh, I want to cover this and cover that. And then you realize like if we go to like a doctor or a lawyer, we don't want the doctor to also be a pizza man and a garbage man. We want him just to be a doctor. <laughs> like in blogging, we don't want to cover all these thoughts in a million areas. You just want to become a specialist, you know? So that's where the credibility grows. Yeah. So this reminded me of Noah Kagan's blog, right? Um, when I was just going through his archives in 2000, 2002, he was publishing about, you know, some random stuff like how he's doing a Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. But when... after a certain period of time he chose a niche like he just started about uh, starting an online business like you know, maybe documenting like what a kind of business book is reading marketing then from business he shifted to niche down more to marketing now if we talk about that blog you know uh, i saw many big celebrities in the marketing niche for example neil patel you know these people are so commenting on his blog from 2010 even the guy from buffer the buffer you will be knowing about it right social media platform like yeah. those guys were commenting in 2010 on his blog so that's a very big you know, it's it's been i think 20 years since he's blogging on his blog so that's the key now if we talk about him like he is not much into blogging he now shifted to youtube more into it yeah evolution yeah we evolve when you keep at it like when i started i was in a different niche and then i trashed that blog and i started blogging paradise and i'm still blogging but you just see when you keep at it and you have a passion you know somewhat of a passion for it you gain clarity in your mind and then that clarity in your mind it reflects in the blog and you become a specialist and you might move away from blogging or you might like me i'd never heard of blog commenting then i moved towards blog commenting then i moved away from that towards guest posting mm-hmm. and now i'm kind of doing a little bit of each but i'm really going back to all my old blog posts and i'm optimizing them i'm linking out to top sites i'm adding yeah. content i'm adding videos it's just and i have like 2700 posts a lot of them are just videos yeah. but those video posts now i'm writing 1000 words 1500 so mm-hmm. it's just i'm getting clear in my mind which is helping me reach more people who are interested and it's just being open to that evolution and it happens with everybody like you said no i was just on his blog yesterday i was looking up tony robbins Mm-hmm. uh researching about him because I wrote a post about him and he comes up on page 1 and it's when he was talking more about going to one of his events and it wasn't super negative but he's like oh I walked out of it and he gave he talked about being mm-hmm. a big fan and he yeah. actually Tony's one of his clients so but yeah. it was just interesting <laughs> you mentioning him and you see these after a while 20 years of putting it you're going to be everywhere you really are so it's like consistency consistency do what you love and then from there there's going to be an evolution and one day i probably i won't be blogging i'll be moving out of it but as for now i'm just changing my strategy slowly but surely getting clear to help more people uh with my my niche you know who i'm really dialing in you know targeting but it's cool to see the evolution because that's that's how it goes and when you fight the evolution that's when the growth stops you can't scale you reach a certain point and you're like i got to force this and you stay right here you got to be open to so it's interesting a really cool study of the mind blogging is yeah so this one is little funny like uh, this is also one of my friend asked have you ever been guilty of uh, fishing you know readers attention from the from someone else's blog <laughs> no honestly i'm not saying that just cuz i'm perfect cuz i've made yeah. a lot of mistakes and i've done spam yeah i never do because I always try to be genuine. Like even when I was new, I didn't know what the heck I was doing like a long long time ago, 2008, 2009. Bloggers were like, "Okay, Ryan, you know, your blog's pretty cool this and that, but the one thing I like about you is you're genuine. You're being yeah. honest." So when I got that idea in my mind, I'm like, no matter what I do, I'm going to do my best to be genuine and honest. And I've been perfect. I've made mistakes. I've done some spam. But yeah, I really haven't done that because I've seen it done early in my career with other bloggers trying to fish attention and put the attention on them and I saw it with so many spam comments so I was like yeah I really don't want to do that because <laughs> I know what yeah. it feels like being on the other side I don't want to use their blog to try to you know serve me or to make it controversial or whatever so but it's okay if you do it there's nothing right or wrong with it it's just knowing like if I make this more about the other blogger instead of me that's going to be more enjoyable it's going to feel better with a clear conscience and also that's where the greater success is because success flows through other people to you it doesn't come from you because if success came from the blogger themselves all our blogs would just be diaries 
<laughs> it's other people. So it's putting yeah. the attention on them and not saying, Hey, come back and look at me. But yeah, I've seen bloggers use that strategy and get traffic and stuff, but then they run into problems with their reputation. And also too, if you notice a lot of them get a lot of resistance, they get a lot of, re- a lot of uh, negative spam and if you put in their name, their reputation, Oh, bad reputation or just more controversy. And I'm really not about that. I'm more about harmony and love and trying to help people and just avoid all that that energetic baggage that comes with trying to play little games or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is the topic that you touched down in many blog posts. Uh, so I thought I w- why not to discuss it over here as well. So what do you think about blogger outreach for guest blogging through commenting? <sighs> through commenting, it's tough only because the comment itself should be about the blog post. No, so me, uh, build, first building attraction using blog comment, then outreaching. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, I got, it, I got it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's where that's where blog commenting is such a phenomenal gateway activity because you could build the relationship, and then when it's strong, you know, give it some time. Give it, like you said, seven contacts, ten contacts. Help the blogger. Help the blogger. And you have to be a skilled writer. But if they have guest posting open or even like, I don't know, link exchange as much of the bloggers do that, but especially guest posting. So link exchange is just a one-time deal. But at least for me, from my experience, when a blogger really commits to commenting on my blog and they're reaching out, they might reach out and like, listen, you know, is there any way I could guest post on your blog? If they've committed for a long time and they could write, they have to be a skilled writer, then more often than not, not now because I've closed it down because I'm just totally optimizing everything old. But in the past, at least, or maybe in the future, then I'll say, yeah, yeah, I guess post on my blog. You know, you've committed to me and I trust them. They're credible. They could write. My community would like them. So yeah, definitely. Most definitely. Blog commenting can open so many doors. I mean, I've talked to, let's see, I'm trying to think of some of the blogs I've been featured on. And I only pitched two people, you know, 40,000, 50,000 backlinks, only pitched two. Uh, Forbes, Fox News, entrepreneur and this is without me even pitching i didn't do outreach yeah. they came to me so blog commenting was one of the key ways to build the relationships so definitely do that keep commenting first though don't just leave one comment like bloggers do that they leave one comment they're like hey can i get featured on your blog it's like i don't know you we're not even bonded yet so i would say persistent outreach seven ten fifteen contacts over weeks months build that bond and it feels really strong and make sure you could definitely write, you know, you have to practice your writing, but from there, then you can use outreach and, and, and send an email, not even a pitch, pitch email as much as just saying, Hey, yeah. could I possibly guest post on your site? I know we built a little bit of a bond. I have these ideas in mind. And when you do that, the key with outreach, if you are going to pitch, make it all about, creating something beneficial to the other blogger. <clears throat> I know your audience likes this. I'll write on these three or four potential topics. I'll respond to every comment. I'll promote the post like it was one of my own. When you make it like you're treating that blog with ultimate respect, you'll land a lot of guest posts on awesome blogs. But when you really do blog commenting seriously, genuinely for a long time, and you promote other bloggers, all the guest posts will come to you. People will invite and say, guest post on my blog. They'll hand you the uh, domain. They'll hand you rather the um, login rights, posting rights, publishing rights. I have them to like three or four blogs. Now at one point I have to like eight or nine blogs where I could just write a post, put a featured image, publish, yeah. you know, no editing They're just So that's when you really do blog commenting, everything will come to you. You wouldn't have to do outreach per se. You wouldn't have to reach out to them. They'll reach out to you. So here is the last question of this particular you know, session. So if you have to summarize everything up, what are the commenting standards you would recommend? You know, everything from that you talked about from beginning to end, just a quick summary of it. Yeah. Something like that. Sure, 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 sure. Comment, always have the reason in mind. Comment to make friends, to share value, to make a serious impact. And then that will keep you commenting through thick and thin. Comment largely on blogs from your niche. You know, generally stick to blogs in your niche. So there's an interest where befriending bloggers that you know, uh, that know you, that you know, rather that have similar interests, be persistent, yeah. be consistent, you know, stick to those blogs and be consistent. Like we've been talking about Shiraj, if you're willing to be really, really consistent, that's where the, the goodness happens and have fun with it. 
realize it is a little bit like a party. It's two people chatting with one another. So when you're having fun with it, address a fellow blogger by name to stay out of spam folders. You sign off with your name too sometimes. Mm-hmm. Really stress or flesh out a point made in the post and stick with it. And you're going to see some really sweet returns through blog comment, a genuine blog comment campaign. Yeah. So that's all guys about this particular podcast episode or video, whatever medium you're watching or listening to. So you can just check out Ryan from blogging from paradise.com. He sell a lot of awesome eBooks. You know, you can just check out them and, and make your day. So that's all about it. So thank you so much Ryan, for showing up. Yeah, I appreciate your time. Karaj, thank you so much, yeah. brother. Much appreciated. Yeah. So, uh,